The next issue I want to talk about is what you should do with a p-value once you have it. What should you do with a p-value once you have it? We've discussed the idea in a few different contexts that a p-value is the probability of seeing data at least as surprising as you actually saw if the null hypothesis was true. For a non-parametric test, a randomization test or a permutation test, perhaps such as the rank sum or the signed rank test, we explicitly can calculate the p-value by looking at all possible randomizations. Or, if it's a permutation test, all possible ways to reallocate the data. For parametric tests, like the t-tests that we've been discussing or the z-test that we mentioned, we make some assumptions about the reference distribution. We make some assumptions that allow us to say that we should compare a particular test statistic to a reference distribution that has a fancy name like z or t. And still, we calculate the p-value as the probability of seeing data at least as extreme as we actually saw. The p-value is always going to be how surprised are we by our data. And I've been telling you, and I agree with this very strongly, that you want to judge those p-values based on how surprised you actually are. Are you surprised by something that happens only 3% of the time? Are you surprised by something that happens 8% of the time? You might be, you might not, in a particular context. But I bet you've heard that the conventional cutoff is 0.05. And there is nothing special. Again, there's nothing special about that 0.05 cutoff. It's just a convention. So what I want to get at right here is the difference between practical significance and statistical significance. Statistical significance just reflects whether your p-value is higher or lower than some cutoff that you've predetermined. Usually it's 0.05, but it doesn't have to be. So maybe before you did your hypothesis test, you declared, I'm going to say that my result is statistically significant if the p-value is less than 0.05. And then you get your p-value, and if indeed it's less than 0.05, then you can say it's statistically significant. If it's greater than 0.05, then you say, my result is not statistically significant at the 0.05 level, the 0.05 cutoff. That's statistical significance. But statistical significance is a different concept than practical significance. And what I mean by practical significance is, did you find something that actually matters? Note that p-values will get smaller as sample sizes get bigger. P-values will get smaller as sample sizes get bigger. And so, for example, if you look at the an example of a two-sample t-statistic. Let me compare this to a t-distribution. In other words, we look to see whether this value is above 2 or less than negative 2. This is the difference in means, right? Then we have the sample variances. Then we have the sample sizes. Suppose that the difference in means that we observe is not particularly big. So suppose that we're doing a medical study, and these are the averages for uh, the proportion of people who were cured, something like that. Okay, this is the proportion of people who were cured. And perhaps this difference, x bar minus y bar, is small. Like maybe the proportions of people are... I don't know, 0.52 and 0.5. And so that numerator here is 0.02, right? There's a small difference there in cure rate, OK? Whether this entire quantity turns out to be bigger than 2 or less than negative 2 is driven by how much data you collect, what the sample size is in one group and another. So even for this numerator, 0.02, we see a difference of 0.02 in the cure rate. That number, my, the numerator might stay the same, but if I collect enough data, if I collect enough data, then these ends will be big, and so the denominator will be small, and so the whole quantity will be big. In other words, the more data I collect, the bigger the t-statistic is going to be. 
and eventually this whole quantity is going to be greater than 2 and this will look statistically significant. But is it practically significant? Should I invest a lot in funding some new drug that's going to increase the cure rate by two percentage points? Perhaps, but perhaps not. Right? Suppose that actually this was a 0.502 cure rate minus a 0.500 cure rate for a difference of 0.002. It's hard to imagine a context where we'd want to invest a lot of money in some new drug, invest a lot of resources in some new drug that increases the cure rate by such a tiny amount. But if I increase these sample sizes enough, eventually the p-value for this difference will be less than 0.05 because this entire statistic will eventually be greater than 2 if I keep on increasing these numbers with this as the numerator. Practical significance has to do with whether the difference between groups that you observed would have a practical impact. Is it important to use one thing as opposed to another if they differ by 0.002? Probably not in most contexts. But this difference could be statistically significant or not just based on the sample size. Similarly, suppose I do a study, suppose I do a study with a big difference here, right? So maybe I see 0.7 minus 0.4. Okay, that's a 0.3. That's a big difference in terms of cure rates. But if my sample sizes are tiny, if I only had a few people in each group, even though this difference in means is so big, I might not reach that 0.05 cutoff. So this might be a case where I have practical significance because I probably want to invest, say, in a drug that's going to increase the cure rate from 40% to 70%, but because I have a small sample size, I might not technically get to that 0.05 cutoff, statistical significance at the 0.05 level. The idea is that when you're trying to decide what you learned from a particular test, you can't make your decision based only on whether the p-value is above your arbitrary cutoff, such as 0.05, or below your arbitrary cutoff, such as 0.05. Instead, you want to take into account that, that p-value, that information, but you also want to look at what the data actually says. What does the data actually say? If it looks like there's a possible big practical difference between the groups, perhaps you should collect more data and see if that holds up, see if that's still true. If it looks like there's a tiny difference between the two groups that couldn't possibly be practically important, then maybe you're getting statistical significance only because you collected a lot of data and it's not worth pursuing the new treatment any further.